again. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about resonance, um, the sort of fundamentals of how resonance works and how important it is for voice. Um, the, this won't really go into exercises very much. I will list kind of like the exercises that you typically use, but I won't go into detail about those exercises. I'll do that in, a, in another video. Um, so what is resonance? Basically, when you have a space and you have um, a sound passing through that space, it picks up certain qualities um, dependent on the space. So every uh, space has a resonant frequency. Um, and you can hear this if you blow across the top of a bottle. You can hear that there's sort of like a tone that's made as you blow across the bottle. Now, if you do change the, um, the amount of air in that bottle, it might be a higher or lower tone. More air in the bottle means a lower tone. Less air in the bottle means a higher tone. This is basically a resemblance of um, its natural frequency or its resonant frequency. And if you were to pass a sound through that space, then it will highlight parts of that sound that are near to the same frequency. So in your voice, you have not just your fundamental frequency, but also a bunch of harmonics, um, theoretically infinite amount of harmonics in your voice. And they kind of like fade out as you go up the frequency range. But basically, there's a lot more information than you realize in your voice. You can hear this even, um, and you'll be able to see it on the spectrogram. There's a lot of information there. And if I were to change the space in my mouth to highlight certain things, let's have a look at that. So... What I'm doing is changing the space in my mouth to highlight certain harmonics in my voice. These harmonics are always there in the voice. It's just that they aren't like highlighted yet because they don't match the resonant frequency of my mouth. Then when I change the resonant frequency of my mouth by changing the space, I can then match it so that it highlights it. So the long story short is um, resonance is when a certain area of the voice um, or anything, or any sound, is highlighted by the resonant frequency of the space. The larger the space, the lower the frequency, the smaller the space, the higher the frequency. This is also when I should note that a formant is that area of the voice that is highlighted. So if we have um, the R1 or F1, the same thing, um, that's just the first formant. R2, F2, same thing again, um, that's just the second formant, the second area of the voice that is highlighted, basing on the fundamental frequency, the F0, which is your pitch. So we have F0, pitch, then we have F1, which is your um, first resonant frequency, your first formant, and then F2, which is your second, F3, which is your third, and so on. Now, if you have a pipe and you make it shorter, you get a higher resonant frequency. If you make it longer, you get a lower resonant frequency. So, what happens if the larynx, which houses the vocal folds, the source of the sound, what if that raises up? Well, you go from this to this, and you get a very, um, a very high resonance highlight. So you can see this on the spectrogram as well. So hopefully you can see how the little, um, the like vague sort of areas that are highlighted in that raise up and then come back down and raise up again in waves. Now this is mainly because I'm changing the position of the larynx. Um, again, which houses the vocal folds, and so you're moving the source of the sound up, and so the vocal tract is essentially shorter. Now, this is not the only way you can change resonance. For example, you can change your mouth space to be really big and really lax, and you'll get a, a much darker sound, and if you change it to be really small and really um, tight, you're pushing your, um, your cheeks in a little, and you get a much brighter sound. 
then there's OPC, um, oropharyngeal closure. So at the back of your mouth, you have this little sort of arch. And if you tighten that arch, you constrict the space and you get a smaller space and therefore a higher frequency. So that sounds like, ah, uh, so one, two, three, one, two, three. So you get a much higher frequency of resonance. But yeah, there are a lot of ways to modify resonance. The main two components we care about here are larynx height and mouth space, because mouth space actually has a really important um, impact on gender presentation. Larynx height on its own might sound a little bit dark, um, whereas if you also add some mouth space resonance changes and you get like brighter sibilance and that sort of thing, then you'll, you'll get a much more feminine sound. And of course, this is really, really important for masculinization as well. The amount of people that I see that have fairly high mouth space resonance who are struggling because it has that much of an effect on gender presentation. Okay, so to summarize so far, um, we've got a voice that has a lot of information in it. It's not just one pitch, it's, it's a bunch of different harmonics um, and even noise in between sometimes. And so that then goes through a filter, which is the vocal tract. And depending on the size of the vocal tract, we get different frequencies being highlighted. As I'm sure many people are aware, a higher resonance is typically a more feminine feature. So for feminization, we want to raise resonance. For masculinization, we want to lower it. So let's just put all this um, sort of information in one spot now so that we can kind of like come back to it later if we need to. Um, these are the aspects that we use to modify resonance. Larynx height, mouth space, OPC, OPE, which is the opposite of OPC. That's where you expand the oropharyngeal arch. And then there's macro vowel, which can kind of like shift everything slightly towards one vowel, um, which, which can also effectively raise resonance as well. If you use, for example, an A vowel, you get a much higher resonance of all of your other vowels um, at the expense of perhaps taking it too far and sounding a bit strange. Okay, so here are some common exercises that are used to modify resonance. And of course, I will be going through these in more detail at a later time. We have big dog, small dog. We have just plain whisper sirens, which are basically the same thing. They're just, um, instead of going, you go, um, so not much of a difference, but yeah, different exercises slightly. Um, then we have um, OPC with kyo kyo kya kya, um, tends to be a good way of doing that. Then we also have reverse yawn, which is like, and a lot of the time um, we kind of like can use that behavioral trigger to get a little bit of a, a boost in resonance that way too. And then probably the best one is just whispering. So we just like whisper like this and then we just try to make it go higher. And then we make it try to go like really, really low instead. In all of these exercises, you'll probably have a tendency to change pitch as well. Um, and so there's also exercises for that. So like dragging the, the pitch down um, while trying to keep the resonance the same or dragging it up and trying to keep the resonance the same. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to go over the um, exercises and that sort of thing um, in a future video. hope that kind of like explains the fundamental sort of aspects of resonance so that everyone is on the same page and, and knows um, what's kind of going on. But yeah, um, I'll see you in the next one.